Hello, YouTube pimps. We're going to talk about science today. But this is some good shit, man. This is part of that 20% that can produce 80% of the results, okay? It's almost like having an ace up your sleeve to know this, all right? So today we're talking about thermal mass and thermal load. I'm going to start with thermal load and explain that to you, okay? Because it'll be real easy to understand thermal mass after that. I want you to think about the thermal load of an object as a battery, okay? That either gives off cold or gives off heat, okay? And at the same time, it's either sucking cold or it's sucking heat, all right? So we're going to use a five-gallon jug of frozen water as our example. Here's our five-gallon jug. It's 31 degrees. We take it into a kitchen that's 72 degrees, okay? What's going to happen to that jug, right? Well, here's the temperature in the kitchen. Here's the temperature of the jug, right? The jug is going to be leaching warmth from the kitchen. It'll thaw, and it's going to continue to do this until they both reach the same temperature. Now, the kitchen is going to drop in temperature a little bit. How much do we know? I don't know. I haven't run a test on it. It might be a degree. It might be two degrees, okay? Um, but that, that battery is sucking heat from the air and releasing cold, okay? Now, let's consider the mass of the battery. It's water, okay? If that battery were full of air, air has 1 20th of the thermal loads. It's going to hardly affect that kitchen. At the same time, if we had five gallons of lead, there's much more mass there. So it is going to affect the kitchen temperature a lot more than five gallons of water would, okay? There we go. So I've explained thermal load and thermal mass, and I hope it makes sense to you. Let's get into a real-world bushcrafter type example of this, okay? Here's what we're going to do, of how you can use thermal load. I'm going to tell you some examples. I'm going to tell you some personal experience, but this video is going to be short overall, dudes. And preppers, y'all need to watch this too, man, because there's some... I'm going to get into how preppers can use it, okay? To be more efficient with their materials, all right? All right, so these two bushcrafters, all right, they go out to the woods together. They both have minimal gear. We're talking like an eight foot by eight foot tarp, uh, a wool blanket, some fire starting materials, some water, and uh, some cooking utensils and some food, right? Okay, they go out to the, the woods, and bushcrafter, first guy, he's like, he makes his lean to with his canvas tarp. He piles up a whole bunch of pine needles, like 12 inch thick of pine needles, puts them under his tarp for his bedding. Starts a little firing right at the edge of his lean-to, right? Because he's going to depend on this fire to keep him warm tonight. It's going to be 32 degrees, all right, in this little scenario, okay? He starts collecting wood, gets fire going, keeps collecting wood. He needs quite a bit of wood, so that's what he's working on. Starts cooking his food. The other guy comes out, okay, with him, and right across from him, he ties down the rear portion of his lean-to, of his tarp. But he doesn't attach the top bit, okay? Piles up a whole bunch of pine needles just like the other guy, but he doesn't put them where his lean-to is going to be. He just kind of keeps them stacked nearby. He makes himself a digging stick. Important to know how to make a digging stick, dudes. I'll have to do a video. I'll add to my list. Anyways, he takes his digging stick, and he digs himself a trench that's 4 feet long by 18 inches wide and about 4 inches deep. He gets his fire going in the ditch. Okay, he starts getting it going, starts collecting a little bit more wood, but he doesn't collect nearly as much wood as the other dude, right? Puts some rocks in there, gets it nice and hot. They both cook their food, right? It's time for bed. Well, the first bushcrafter, you know, he goes and just goes to sleep with his fire going. And he wakes up every hour, hour and a half, and puts more wood on the fire and is blowing on it and shit, right? And boy, the next day, he's like, man, that was fun, but I'm tired. And I wasn't really all that warm, right? Well, second dude, when it's time for bed, he just spreads his coals and stones around in that little trench he dug and buries it with dirt. Now he piles his pine needles on top of it to create some cushion and some insulation from the ground, right? But not a ton. He doesn't need as much. 
And then he goes ahead and ties off the front and highest portion of his tarp. So he completes his lean-to. Okay, He goes to bed. And he wakes up in the morning after a good night's sleep. He's been nice and warm all night. Because what happened, dudes? He used the, the, the tricks of thermal mass and thermal load to literally heat the ground underneath him. And he basically slept on a freaking heating pad all night long. Okay. Real world scenario coming in right here. Not only have I done it that way a lot of times. Okay. But I've also, you know, set up, I've, I've planned to have my bed in like a slight depression without even digging it out especially when there's no rain coming, right? That's obviously the best time to do that, but a very slight depression. And I've just rolled rocks from a fire over into the depression, thrown dirt on top of it, slept on top of that. I've done that um, once. Okay, I'll tell you a story. It was late December and the temperatures were high 30s in the day and it was high single digits at night. Okay, I was traveling from point A to point B I intentionally took very minimal gear. All I had on were blue jeans with some poly pro bottoms, okay, and a thin jacket with poly pro top on. And poly pros guys are basically like long johns, but they're a little thicker. Okay, they're military issue. I still have my original pair and and some and some extra pairs from being in the service, okay. And I still use them, all right. Anyways, uh, that's what I had with me. I had a knife. I had a fire steel. I had some water, no food, and none of that. And uh, I wasn't going to make it to my final destination, so I decided I better, um, you know, make camp now and find a way to keep myself warm because I had no sleep system with me, all right? I decided to spend the night in a three-foot diameter culvert that ran under a highway, Okay, so what I did was I cut some green bows and I collected some firewood. I got the firewood first and I got a fire going in the culvert. In the culvert where it has dirt around it, okay, where it's buried under the highway, okay. There was no sign of any rain, no clouds, so I knew I was safe there and there's flash floods aren't an issue where I live, okay. So I went ahead and got a fire going in that culvert, sat there, warmed myself after I cut my green bows, and after I let a, the good fire burn down, I went ahead and scraped everything out and buried it so we didn't have any forest fire problems. That'd be shitty to wake up to that outside the culvert, right, in the middle of the night. And I laid my bows down and I, and I went to sleep. And as a matter of fact, I woke up in the middle of the night and had to strip a layer. So I basically slept in my polypros and socks. Warmer and shit all night long, guys. Because I took advantage of the secret of thermal mass and thermal load. And I heated that culvert up really well. And the dirt under it and the dirt around it. And it basically created this nice warm cushion of air around me and a warm floor all night long. And it, it also heated up the bows I was sleeping on. It was super, super comfortable. Okay, And it sounds insane to be comfortable sleeping in a culvert under a highway. But it absolutely was. All right. Um, so this shit is for real, dudes. It's for real. All right. Now let's talk about this in another angle. Okay. I want to talk about the native cultures in North America. A lot of them slept in homes made of some kind of earth. Okay. Or lived in them year round. All right. There's a lot of cultures where they only lived in homes made of earth in the winter time and in the summertime, you know, they slept on elevated pads because of poisonous snakes and shit like that. Right. Okay. But these earth homes, a lot of them were built with like a stick frame. Okay. And then piled with sod or piled with piled with dirt and covered with dirt and then grass and then more dirt or it was sticks on the interior, then grass, then dirt, you name it. Right. A lot of different ways to do it. Okay. But what would happen in the wintertime is, you know, they've now created a thermal mass around them, right? So they're, they have their campfire inside the hut and it's literally heating the earth. It's heating the ground underneath them. And it takes a while to do that guys, but it does work. It will heat the ground fire on the ground. That's burning, you know, 24 hours a day for a while. It'll heat that ground up. Uh, but they're also heating walls and, and 
think about the efficiency when it comes to firewood. Okay? Seriously, guys, think about the efficiency. It matters. Especially if you're in a place where there's not a lot of shit to burn. You really, really need to find a way to take advantage of thermal load. All right? Okay, how does this apply to preppers? How can preppers use this? I'm going to give you an example based on my own situation. Okay, in the house, we have a wood stove. We use a wood stove to heat the home. And a wood stove obviously has iron, which has a lot of mass. Okay, so you can literally look at a wood stove and be like, all right, this is a 120-pound wood stove. It has 120 pounds of mass, basically. And I know mass and weight is not exactly the same thing. It's not, okay? But it has so much mass, and that mass heats up from the wood, and it emanates heat even after the fire goes out. Well, people also put fire brick in their wood stoves, like mine has, okay? And that adds additional mass. Well, what else can you do? I, what I do is put large pots of water on top of my wood stove because water has a pretty decent thermal load. Right? And it heats the air after the wood stove goes out. In addition, the floor in the house is concrete. It has It's on a concrete pad. So the concrete under the wood stove heats up and emanates heat throughout the house at night. It's actually super crazy efficient, guys. And I want you to compare this to a modern home that runs on central heat. Modern homes are not efficient. You know what they are? They're fast and cheap to build. That's what they are. Okay? You know, so I want you to think about that. Like, if especially if you're looking at, at relocating or you're building your own place or you're building a cabin, look at rocket mass heaters. Okay? Definitely look at those. If I own this home, I probably would put a rocket mass heater in it, but I don't, okay? Um, so, you know, there you have it, guys. Um, and like I said, oh, I don't know if I said this video is going to be pretty short, but it's not going to be a long one. We're about done. What I want to do, though, is I want to challenge you guys to find a way to use thermal mass to benefit your modern life in some way. You don't have to do it every day. But do an experiment. You know, even those that, th that shit you see on TikTok and stuff like that where dudes are heating their living room with a candle and a clay pot over top of it, right? Just find a way to use this as an exercise and to create some kind of heat that lasts using these thermal principles of mass and load, okay? The other thing I want you to do is when you get out camping, Next time you get out to the woods, I want you to find a way to use these principles. And a great way to do it is to literally build a fire in a trench and sleep on top of it. I'm going to tell you right now, you are going to be absolutely shocked at how warm it keeps you at night. Okay? Shocked. All right? Very, very efficient way to rock it. And to do it saving wood, right? Okay, dudes, that's it, guys. I hope you liked it. It's a it's a very cool trick to have up your sleeve, man. It's like having an ace up the sleeve. I'm serious, okay? Uh, so like, share, subscribe, okay? Hit me up in the comments. What kind of ideas do you have for taking advantage of these thermal load principles, okay? And uh, guys, check out my Patreon page. I'm going to put a link in the description uh, if you want to give me a tip because you like my content or you want to help support the channel, that's the place to do it. And that's it. I'm going to wrap it. I'll see you all in the next video.